Welcome to another free tip of the week brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's class, I'm going to teach you how to relate a table to itself. This question comes to me from Jenny. She said, I've now completed through Access 201. What I'm faced with is a generating a report very similar to the contacts report done in Access 104 and 201, where we have a list of customers and a list of contacts, and you want to show all the contacts, which are basically phone calls or conversations with each customer. I want to list a primary member's name and their information, and then also list all the family members related to them. So she has two tables, a primary table and a family table. And in the primary table, that's the like head of household, I'm assuming. And in the family table, that's everybody else. That's what I gather. In the family app, the family form, I have a drop-down box that accesses the primary queue where I choose the primary member's name that the family member is related to. I'm having difficulty creating the query that brings the two tables together because there are common fields between them, like name. Without this query, I can't create the report that pulls in related family members, can I? So I'll try to reconstruct your tables, Jenny. First of all, in your primary table, one thing I'm going to recommend is don't use the name name as one of your field names because name is an actual reserved word in Access. You want to try and avoid that if possible. What you might be better off using is first name and last name. Now let's assume that's all you need. You can have other things in here too, like address and phone number and that kind of stuff. But I'll save this as my primary T. Okay, and I'll just put a couple of records in here. Okay, got a couple of records. And now I'll make a family T. I'll just copy this one, right? Copy, paste, family, T. Open it up. I'll delete the records that are in here, since those are all primaries. And we'll change the structure just slightly. This is going to be family ID now. And for each family member, you want to specify who the primary is. So we'll throw the primary ID in here as a foreign key. Remember, this is a number of type long integer, right, relating to an auto number. If I want to throw some data in here, we've got Bill Smith and Jane Smith. Their primary is both one. All right, Alan Jones, primary is three. All right, Wilma Flintstone, primary is four. All right, now Mark Smith, primary is two. All right, these are the related fields from up here. Even though the field names are the same for first name and last name, we shouldn't have a problem relating these together. You can build your relationships on a form, right? Forms new. All right, we'll pick our family table for our form. Bring in all the fields. I'll delete primary ID and turn that into a combo box, right? Bring up my toolbox. I'll grab a combo box, drop it on here. Make sure your wizards are on. Drop it on here. Right? Look up the values in a table or query. What am I looking up? I'm looking someone up from the primary table. Next. Bring over all my fields. Might want to bring over last name first, but that's okay. Okay, we'll sort by last name, then by first name. Here's a preview of my columns. And I'm going to store that value in primary ID. Next. Okay, what label do you want? Primary, colon. And there's my combo box. Alright, I'll save this as my family form. And now I can see, here's my family member and the primary I can pick from this list. And that's how you can make your relationship. Okay, now, if you want a query to relate these together so you can see all the primaries and all their family constituents, let's call it, right, new query, design view, bring in both tables, I'll bring in primary first, then family, there's my relationship. Now bring in all the fields from primary T, and then just the fields you want to see from family T. For example, you could bring in last name, first name. All right, I'll save this as my, let's call this family Q for family query. And if I run this, all right, you'll see here's my primary T dot first name, primary T dot last name. And then over here, you'll see the family T first name and family T last name. Notice how Joe Smith repeats, and for each Joe Smith over here, you'll see each family member for Joe. 
Right? Joe's got two family members. Sue's got one. Pete's got one. And Fred's got one. Now, each time if you use this query in another form, just remember it's going to be primary t dot first name instead of just first name. You'll have a primary t dot first name and a family t dot first name. And you could, those are perfectly valid field names that you can use in your forms and reports or other queries. If I make a report up now, reports new, design view, I'll base it off that family query. I'll bring in all the fields. Now here's a little trick. I've got a separate tutorial on this, but right here is a little button called sorting and grouping levels. We'll turn a grouping level on for my primary ID that will group all those records together, and I'll turn the group header on right there. Now I'll take the information related to the primary, this stuff, cut it out, control X, and move it up here, paste it into the primary header section like this. Right? And then I can just clean these up a little bit. Here's the primary label, right? There's the ID. And I'll put last name and first name up here next to it. All right, like that. So here's the primary. Maybe bold that stuff. And then underneath the primary in the details section, you'll have your family member information. All right? I'll just get rid of those labels and put the family member information right here. Like that. Now, let me save this report. I'll save this as my family R for report. And when I run the report, look what I get. Right? I get my primary grouping level up here, and then all the family members underneath it. Then the next primary, all the family members under there, and so on. All right? That's a sorting and grouping level. And there's a whole separate tutorial about that in my tips and tricks section on the website. It's a free tutorial. So as you can see, having those fields, family t dot first name and primary t dot first name, don't really affect the database at all. That's perfectly fine. Okay, you can use those field names throughout your database. Now, what I would have done in the first place is to build all this information into one table, all right, like your family table, for example, and ignored primary T altogether. If the information between both of these tables is pretty much the same, I would just put it all in one table. If you've got different fields, things more than just first name, last name, address, phone number, email address, the basics. If you've got unique stuff and a lot of unique stuff, then sure, use two tables. But if both of these tables have pretty much the same information, you can relate a table to itself. All right, for example, I'll delete primary T, and I'll delete the family que query we just built and the report. All right, and in my tables, what I'll do is I'll design family T. All right, I'll leave a primary ID in here, but instead of relating this to a primary table, I'll just relate it back to itself. This is actually going to be a family ID. And in the family table, I'll put a, a field called is primary. That'll be a yes or no field. And that way I can indicate who the primary is for each family member. This video is a little bit too long for YouTube's 10 minute limit. So look for part two of the relating a table to itself video in my YouTube account.